Should a Christian date a Mormon? Next on the Ex-Mormon Files. Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and I appreciate you joining us. If you recall, last, last we were together, uh, Ian shared his story about coming to uh, Christianity, and today we're going to meet his girlfriend at this point. And uh, his girlfriend has, was Christian, is Christian, and so she has an interesting perspective that I think could actually help a lot of people. And I started out with the question of should a Christian date a Mormon, and we know that happens quite a bit. So Ashlyn Sumner, we appreciate you coming. And Thank you. Yeah. You're also all the way from Tennessee, right? Yes. Okay. Where were you born and raised? I was born in Knoxville, Tennessee and raised in Oak Ridge, Tennessee. Okay. Yeah. And you, your whole life you spent there? And... Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And your family, uh, what religion were they or were they active in a religion? Yeah. My parents, they've always been really involved in church. Okay. And so my brother and I were always at church twice a week. Yeah, was this denominational or a non-denominational um, church? Um, it was or? Baptist. Was it? Yes. And that's pretty common, I guess, back in Tennessee. Yes. So. <laughs> so you went to church and you mm -hmm. went through all the, did you go through summer schools and kind of camps and kinds of things? Yes. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> I did VBS every year. And now what's VBS? Vacation Bible School. Okay. So we did that. I led a lot of Bible studies for mission trips across seas and... Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. And, and, and you said you had brothers and sisters? How many do you... Yes. Um, I have a brother. Yeah. And he's older than me. And, and he's Christian as well? Right? Yes. Okay. And no sisters? No just, sisters. Just the older brother. Okay. Yes. Oh. <laughs> well, that's neat. So active and, and what do they have like, they don't have release time at school or anything. You don't study uh, religion in school necessarily no. like, a, like Mormons do or the yes. seminary and stuff. That was very foreign to me. <laughs> yeah, that they have that. Uh -huh. Okay. Well, so you're, uh, of course, very young still, but how <laughs> did your relationship with Ian start? How, what, how did that begin? So, <laughs> Ian and I met on his mission. Okay. And now, was this the first Mormon you had met? Actually... Or do you know Mormons? Have all, you know Mormons? Mm -hmm, my whole friend group, they were all Mormon. <laughs> really? Yes. How did that happen? <laughs> um, it was crazy, honestly. I... One of my best friends in high school, he was Mormon. Really? And he wasn't very active in the church, but his family was Mormon, and so all of his friends were Mormon. So right now, they're most of them are all missions right now. They are right now? Mm hmm well, Did they try to convert you to Mormonism, those kids? Um, it Or invite you to church and that kind of thing? Or They told me that I <laughs> was going to hell. <laughs> Oh, that's nice. <laughs> yeah, that's the only time that we've ever talked about it. Really? But it didn't really end very well because we were all just it, they not really, on the same page. <laughs> it's interesting. Mormons don't really, well, I, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but don't really have a concept of hell as much as yes. a, a Christian does. But, yeah. But they felt like you weren't going to make it to the... To back to God, for yes, sure. Yes, celestial okay. or yeah. kingdom, yeah. <laughs> celestial kingdom, yeah. So that didn't end well. It no. Like, but, but they were your friends. Yes, and so I So you knew a little bit about Mormonism from them. Yes. Okay, and so, <laughs> and then, then Ian comes along, I guess. Okay, tell yes. us about that. So Ian and I met seven months before he went home. Okay. And it was actually kind of crazy. We met and we both knew that it would be really rocky if we progressed in our relationship. We were starting to get feelings for each other, so we knew that we needed to pray about what was going on. And we knew what the Bible said. We knew that we were unequally hoped because it's just 
completely two separate, they're completely opposite. And so, although from the outside it looks like that they're similar, but they're so not. So you're talking about two different kinds of religion, even yes. though it looks like it's both religion, but mm -hmm. yeah, did you know, did you know about or did he explain to you kind of who Jesus was as a Mormon or mm -hmm. pro current prophets and all that kind of stuff? Yes, I didn't really know about the modern day prophet and the apostles until I started doing more studying and yeah. asking questions. And then he would explain things to me when I didn't understand. But... um <laughs> whenever we both n prayed, we knew that there was something greater at the end of this, and we didn't know what it was, and that was scary, not mm -hmm. knowing what that meant. And we just kept getting this answer to be patient. Really? Something great is going to come out of this. Yeah. And when you think of that, you think it'll be three months from now. But no, it was almost two years later. <laughs> <laughs> now... This was seven months still he had left on his mission. Yes. And you were kind of in the same area for a little bit? or So where he could see you or go to your home? Yeah. Well, I guess he did that the last night, right? Or he was mission. in Oak Ridge, which is where I lived. And then um, he, a few, like a month later, he ended up going to North Carolina Oh. And so he was a few hours away from me, but he actually ended up getting sent back. To your area. Yeah. Okay. Which was kind of crazy. <laughs> but. And nice, I suppose. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, during that time, did you, you were studying Mormonism at all during those seven months when he left, before he left? Yes. You were studying. What were you reading? Um, <laughs> I was reading the King Follett's Discourse. Oh, okay. And that raised a lot of questions and concerns. Now, did you just go to the internet and look up Joseph Smith or more LDS Church or Mormons, or what did you do? Yeah, I looked up a lot of my main, the main thing that I was trying to look for were other testimonies of girls or even guys that were in relationships that had gone through something similar and there was nothing out there. Again, the unequally oaked, yes. oaked thing. Okay. What did your folks think of you looking at Mormonism at all? <laughs> um, they were terrified. <laughs> that you had joined the church? Um, I think my parents knew that I wouldn't because Cer I... Certainly hoped they, that you wouldn't. Like yeah. This, but yeah. But I think that they also were scared that there is still that chance that I would yeah. because of eternal mar uh, <laughs> eternal families and, right. you know, all of that. I think they were a little <laughs> worried about it. <laughs> well, so did you have, um, um, well, I guess I'm trying to just, did you understand the differences then between the the, the Mormon Jesus, say, and the Christian Jesus, the Bible Biblical Jesus and um I everything looked good from the inside from the outside and then when I started watching Apologia and just learning more about the Godhead compared to the Trinity and <laughs> realizing that there are huge differences doctrinally but also with practices and all of that. Yeah. And that's when I realized that Ian was worshiping another Jesus than I was. Yeah. And he thought the opposite of me. <laughs> of course. Yeah. So did you, I mean, you, you really felt like there was a, a, an emotional connection and a love starting to grow mm -hmm. between the two of you. Did you think this could happen if you had these religious differences? No, I knew it. We both knew that it couldn't happen. Yeah which was really scary and sad at the same time. But we just knew that we had to be patient and keep okay. on praying about it. And so he goes home. Yes. And then just shortly after, a few weeks later, he comes back mm -hmm. and tell us what happened with that. So I was finishing up my senior year of high school. So he would come during my breaks to visit me. Wow. 
And then when I graduated, he moved out here or out to Tennessee. Out to Tennessee, yeah. And that was when I feel like whenever you have differences and we were talking about it, it's different over the phone than it is in person. And so we would talk about it and keep talking about it. And it was almost like every single day we were debating, yeah. <laughs> essentially, about. Yeah. Now, he said that during his mission, he studied the Bible yes. a little bit. Did, were you able to use that to, to help him maybe understand a few things the way you saw them? Yes, I think, especially with pre-existence and some other things that he would bring up to me, sometimes I would think, oh, okay, well, that makes sense. But then I would read everything in context and kind of be like, okay, Ashlyn, it's no, it doesn't. And I think it was the same for him. Yeah. That we were both showing each other things that made us think more about what verses we were reading. And so we kind of had to know. Yeah. Well, this is fascinating. I, the, what, what really prompted uh, you to, you invited him to church. Mm -hmm. Okay. And w did that help a little bit? No. Um, <laughs> Actually, he, during the summer of 2018, when he started coming to church with me, he wanted to explore other denominations. And so I think that he was kind of set on, okay, I don't think Baptist is where I would want to be if I was. And so he was visiting all of these other churches, which I let him do because Did I Did you go with him? Um, no, I didn't want to, I didn't want to be that little thing on the shoulder that's constantly oh. telling him. I wanted him to figure it out for himself. Yeah. And because I think that's really important. I don't think there's anything that I could have done. It was just Christ, me being an example in whatever and the Holy God Spirit. Direct him yeah. Along, and he mm -hmm. went to different places and did he... Did he come back and talk to you about what he'd learned or seen? And Yes. <laughs> yeah. And were you glad or sad or were you think that, well, I'm making progress here or mm -hmm. he is? And did you? Yes, I was glad because I felt like there was progress there. It wasn't, <laughs> he wasn't going to the LDS church. He and, wasn't. Mm -mm. Okay. and so I thought that. There is some hope there. <laughs> so what happens during these two years? You just uh, you, you kind of talk about different topics and stuff. And do you give him stuff to read? Or did he give you things to read, like the Book of Mormon? or Yes. Did he? Uh-huh. <laughs> he was giving me stuff to read. And um, I would the only thing that I would really talk to him about would be um, Scripture in the Bible. Yeah. And he, he gave me a copy of the Book of Mormon. <laughs> and did you read it? <laughs> um, I read the introduction and First Nephi. Yeah. But I was, whenever he gave me a copy, it was when we had freshly met. So I was really scared to read it because <laughs> I didn't know what uh, yeah. to expect. Or yeah. I didn't want to become someone that he was teaching. I didn't want to be... An investigator. Yes, I didn't want to be that. <laughs> yeah. So you weren't going to become a Mormon, and no. at this point, he probably wasn't going to become a Christian. No. <laughs> so what did you sense in him, and, and how did he move along or progress? Um, I noticed every time that he would ask a question about the Trinity, or that he would raise these concerns, I would try to study the best that... I could and try to have the right words that the spirit would just flow out of <laughs> the meditation of my heart and just that I would say the right things. I wouldn't confuse him right? because I know that the Trinity is hard to just. It is the hardest. It mm -hmm. seems like it's the most important, but it, mm -hmm. it sure is a hard, it's a hard thing. Concept. To, yeah. yeah. And that was really the last thing that he was stuck on was mm -hmm. the Trinity. Yeah. And so I knew, okay, if if somehow I can explain this the right way and just give him the right verses and direct, try to 
no. direct him in the right path, that that would be a huge milestone. <laughs> and it was. It was. Yeah. Yeah. What did you think when he kind of started, when he'd asked good questions from you and, and sound like he was really, did it, I guess that was a good time for you, right? Yes, it scared me because he knew, I mean, that's what he did for two years was a missionary and study. Oh, before, yeah. Yeah, and so I was really scared because I knew that he would probably win the <laughs> debates or that I would get really scared and shut down. And so every time he'd ask me a question, I would try to prepare myself and be like, okay, I can do this. <laughs> well, God can do this. Yeah, I, th I think it is. there is a certain pride I mean, I guess just being a guy, I guess we shouldn't be <laughs> genderish saying those things, but guys are proud. <laughs> and for him, that, that takes a lot of humility, really, to, yes. to come around and to start seeing things, especially where you're just off of your mission, yeah. where you spent two years bearing your testimony and, and so on. So I'm really proud of him for, I know. for having the courage or the humility to kind of say, God, I'm in your hands, I guess. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like he did that? Yes, Yeah. for sure. I knew that at, no matter what happened, I knew that his main focus leaving for his mission was to figure out, is God there? Is he real? And um, that's I, that's what he talked about in his portion. Yeah, But did say that. It broke my heart in another sense because after he thought he had his testimony in the Book of Mormon and that it was true, sure. then it was almost like he was at step one again. And he didn't know, okay, well now what do I do? And it was sad seeing him go through that and trying to figure out all of these questions he had again. But it was amazing seeing how he's grown from that yeah. and where he is now. Yeah, It's amazing. <laughs> It is amazing. <laughs> I was really thrilled with his, his maturity already in, uh -huh. as a young Christian. And <laughs> I mean, I know how that time it takes and, and understanding grace even and, and some of those major concepts that are so... And, and in Mormonism, we, Mormons just have, have these certain thought processes, you know, and, and they were just kind of unwilling to look too far away from that, you know, like the modern prophets and so on. We just have mm -hmm. to trust what they say. Yes. It sounds like God planted some good things mm -hmm. for you to share and for, for him to learn. Yes. <laughs> Did you know any of the books that he was reading or studying? Yeah, he would talk to me about some of the books that he was reading. And there was someone that he really admired that was Christian, Yeah. giving him some books to read. Which made me happy because that was someone else other than just me oh, saying sure. things. Yeah. And, and was this person, had he been a Mormon? Yes. Okay. Carl Wimmer. Carl Wimmer. Yes. Oh, yeah. I, I know Carl very well. And, yes. And so he gave him some books to read. Do you remember which ones they were? Um, I... Seems like I, I remember him saying something about Grant Palmer's book, the... Uh, or... Oh, Mormon, oh my goodness, I can't, I blanked out there. <laughs> I know it so well. Anyway, uh, Grant Palmer's book. <laughs> yes. Mormon Origins. But yes. I can't remember the yeah. beginning of that. Anyway, anything else that you remember that he read? View of the Hebrews, I think he mentioned that one yeah. too, that he read the View of the Hebrews. Mm -hmm. Well, that's neat. And so did did you learn any of that? Insider's view of Mormon origins. I couldn't get. Thanks, uh, Dorothy. <laughs> anyway, that's uh, that's a tremendous book, mm -hmm. and I think it adds to that. Let's talk real quickly though about being unequally yoked and mm -hmm. and what that meant to you. Did you see ever since that this isn't going to work out? Um. Yes, but I trusted in God's plan, and again, of being patient and everything. Yes. You mean. Yeah. And to me, at that time, that was the ultimate test of patience for me. Yeah. Because it was really hard. I and bet. there 
weren't more there weren't people that I could really relate to at the time. Yeah. And so I just solely depended on Christ. Yeah. And I think that Ian and I, if we would have just given up, he wouldn't be where he is today, yeah. that's for sure. Yeah. yeah, so I'm blessed that we were patient yeah. with everything. Now, were your folks involved at all with talking to him, or did did they talk? Did he talk to them at all, or <laughs> vice versa? Yes, he. The night before he left, yeah, for he left to go home from his mission. Right. He actually, him and one of his com companions taught my family. They tried, and my mom was <laughs> listening, but to my dad also, they were just very. So they did try to give a lesson then, to yes. your folks. Okay. Um, <laughs> it didn't really. <laughs> go very far. But no. <laughs> remember what they were talking about? Was it? Prophets or Book of Mormon or what? The Book of Mormon. Was it? Yes. Okay. And my mom, I knew that she was constantly praying for Ian. And ever since I was little, I prayed for the man that God was preparing for me. And I just would always well, that's neat. pray for that as a little kid. And even as young as 10, I was always praying about um, my future husband. That God would bring a... A good man yes. into your life. And... and my mom, she always makes this joke now, but she always prayed that whoever I was with, he would be very devoted to his relationship with Christ mm -hmm. and all these things. And she was like, I didn't, I wasn't specific enough in my prayer. <laughs> she needed to be more specific. Yeah. <laughs> but... <laughs> uh. Well, have you seen a change in Ian? Yes. And what yes. what do you observe, or what, what kind of things do you feel like he's changed? He has changed tremendously. I know that he is so dedicated to reading every single day. Every morning he's always reading the Bible, and I feel like now we can talk about new things that we've learned, yeah. and we're just talking about it and loving it, and we're not arguing about it <laughs> or anything like that. Did he ever show emotion when, when he was start, starting to learn the good news of yes. the gospel? You yes. remember that? And mm -hmm. Did that mean a lot to you? The, yes, yeah. it did. Yeah. In what way did, did you see that or sense it? Do you remember? Um, I, whenever he dedicated his life to Christ and was baptized, I could easily start detecting the fruits of the Spirit. Yeah. And I could tell that he was genuinely happy. Yeah. And that he was not confused about different things that other people were telling him and questions the, that he had. Yeah. And even with those questions, he was able to ask someone now. Yeah, and I think that's neat, isn't it? I think mm -hmm. in Christianity there is at least that ability to ask questions and and try to research and study. And mm -hmm. there's a lot of different points of view. I realize, and sometimes those can be tested. But, uh, <laughs> yes. but that's neat. Mm -hmm. Well, talk a little bit about what you you and uh, Ian hope to do with your ministries that you. Yes. Tell us about that. So we feel called to be missionaries and we are starting a college age ministry called okay. Grace Abounding. Grace Abounding. Okay. Yes. And we are going to start our own YouTube channel to reach and kind of like with what you guys are doing, yeah. help people that have questions. And with Grace Abounding, it's a First, it's going to start at our pastor's apartment buildings that he owns. Okay. And so we're going to start there and then start a class at our church so that they can start coming with us to church. And Now, would you be inviting former Mormons or just anyone that wants to know more about Mormonism? 
We would be inviting anyone. Okay. Anyone that, even college students that don't have any ties with Mormonism. But just to teach them and mm -hmm. encourage them in their Christian walk? Yes. Okay. Well, that sounds neat. Well, when you get a website, and I guess you're mm -hmm. working on that or something, be sure to let us know and we'll, we'll pass it on. Thank you. <laughs> And did you have a born-again moment in your life? Maybe the people would like to know what, what your experience is that way when you really realized mm -hmm. that Jesus was the Lord of your life. <laughs> so, did you? Um, yes, I did have a born-again moment. I was really young yeah. when it happened. I was seven years old, and before that, I, like, I was saying my parents were very involved in church, so I was that little girl that loved Jesus, and <laughs> I just, I didn't really understand what He did for me. Right. And so I went, from six years old to nine, I went through some sexual abuse, oh. and I knew that the only person I could go to was Christ during that time because yeah. I was so young. And um, I had prayed about many times that I was scared. And then that is when I knew that there was someone that loved me that would do anything to have me. Yeah. And that knew what I was going through. And so that was when I clung on to what Christ was to me at seven years old. Yeah. And so. It's amazing. So that's kind of my born again moment. I was really young, but yeah. I felt saved. And that's why the cross meant so much to me when I was little <laughs> and now, because it took the Savior dying on the cross for me to a whole nother level. Because I knew that he would save me. Isn't from that so special? Pain. Yeah. I wish I'd known this at your young, tender age. And <laughs> didn't wait till I was an old guy to, <laughs> to learn it. But I'm so grateful to know it more than uh, it just means everything to me now. And you've got a wonderful life ahead of you. And Thank you. That's neat. Um, and I wish you the best in everything you guys do. It sounds like Thank you've you. got a great future ahead. And. Um, <laughs> And any last minute thoughts you have or anything you want to share? Just thank you so much for allowing us to come on here. Oh, it's been my pleasure and you're so sweet. And, you know, it's just interesting that um, I do know I've had people call, parents, concerned parents call and say my daughter's starting to marry, uh, starting to date a Mormon. And um, and they're concerned because <laughs> they're they're thinking that maybe they're going to be converted to Mormonism or and you know I, I think sometimes there's not a foundation of Jesus like you're saying how much he meant to you early on in your life mm -hmm. and so that was your foundation mm -hmm. you just had Jesus with you and so there was no question about what what was true and I, I think some of these parents are concerned because and, and hopefully they've raised their children well enough to to give them so they have that foundation in Jesus. So, anyway, well, thanks, Ashlyn. You're a sweet young lady, and I wish you the best. Thank okay. you. All right. And we'll see you next time on the X Moment Files.